So at last we have the Necron index cards and I am making a video about them. It seems Games Workshop do not hate Necrons, they love them. And it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right today we are talking about the new Necron Index cards and as a long time Necron player playing from 3rd edition and playing in every edition since, I am very excited. Today we're going to run through the Index cards, the release itself, have a general chit chat about them and of course in the future we're going to be making lots of videos all about Necrons. So if you want to learn about Necrons and more then please subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. So before we get into some of the actual data cards themselves let's have a quick talk about my initial thoughts when I saw the release and I flicked through all of these new data cards, index cards that we've got. Now my first thought was leadership because of course we already knew that warriors were going to be leadership 7 which is actually quite high. Necrons always had a really good leadership, leadership 10 which you would have thought in 10th edition would translate into like a really low leadership but well it hasn't. Leadership 7 on the warriors and the HQs are all leadership six. So I thought, well, what is going on here? However, uh, we have had some other things confirmed uh, in this index release, and that is things like Battleshock. We now know that RP is done before Battleshock, so we've got a good chance of getting our uh, units back up over 50% to avoid Battleshock tests. And we've got some various things uh, with the other index cards where we can actually uh, do more RP, things like resurrection orbs and reanimators and ghost arcs where uh, potentially we're going to hopefully avoid battle shock uh, to, in the majority of times. So overall I'm not too bothered about the leadership and I'm, I'm okay with it. The other thing which stood out to me was movement. It seems a good number of our units have actually lost movement I noticed this in the Imitech, the Stormlord release which we had before the index cards, the sort of preview, his movement uh, moving down to 5 inches from 6 inches. But yeah, quite a few of our units have reduced in their speed. However, looking at a lot of the other armies, there's quite a number of armies which have also had uh, their movement reduced, probably because Games Workshop are trying to make 10th edition less lethal and I would have thought this movement reduction is probably part and parcel of that. Probably one of the big changes uh, which I noticed was the unit uh, composition. So we've now got uh, compositions of blocks of units. So for example, if you have warriors, you take 10 warriors or you take 20 warriors. You can't take 19 warriors or 15 warriors. And the same for a lot of the other units. So for example, Wraiths, it's three or six. And the idea of this is to make list building easier, apparently. It makes working out the points easier and you just pick three Wraiths or six Wraiths and away you go. However, what I'm thinking is it actually could make list building a little harder rather than easier. Because I mean, when I build lists, I sort of build the building blocks of the list and at the end when I have like say about a hundred points left I then fine-tune the list and sometimes that does mean like a reducing a unit's number by one model so that I can sort of get to the uh, composition of the army that I want so whilst list building may be easier and simplified in some ways I think it's going to be harder but we'll see how that goes. I also noticed that our unit sizes have been reduced on some miniatures as well. I mean the standout one of course is flayed ones. We can no longer take them in units of 20, only units of 10. Now to be fair, in the old days that was always the case anyway. 10 was the maximum you could take. However of course we can only take three of the same data cards. So the maximum amount of flayed ones now in a list 
how 10th edition works currently is of course only 30. So my 60 strong flayed one list is no more. That's sad, but it's okay because things change and one day that list will be back. I'll be back. Now, of course, we know already that our detachment abilities, the Awakened Dynasty ability, where we get plus one to hit if we have a character joined, sorry, leading a unit. Now, of course, in the future, when we actually get our codex, which is going to be around September, we are going to get other uh, dynasty abilities, and they're probably going to be along the lines of some of the other dynasties that we've had in the past, and maybe something for close combat, for like a Novok type based one, etc. For now, though, we've got the Awakened Dynasty. Now, I did look at the stratagems, had a quick uh, run over them. We're going to have a closer look in a minute. Uh, but the stratagems, what I was really pleased to see was that they were all 1 CP. Uh, so we've got a good chance of getting our stratagems off because, of course, uh, CPs are going to be very difficult to get in 10th edition. So, yeah, having cheap, low-cost stratagems is going to be key. Now, of course, we already knew how RP was going to work, but we didn't know how the rest of the units were going to interact with the RP but I'm very pleased to see how the Resurrection Orb works and the Ghost Arts and the Reanimators and the uh, Dominion Stones. More on those in a minute. Uh, but overall, RP seems to be in a pretty decent place. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share how I went about looking at these new index rules. I actually did it twice. I did it once. Uh, without the points because of course the points came later and then I did it again with the points and what I did is I ranked all of the rules uh, with a three star system so one star was not that great two star was pretty decent and three star of course was very good and I had to re-rank some of these uh, rules once I'd seen the points so I'm just going to share my initial sort of thoughts on the index release and of course in the future we're going to delve much deeper into the individual data cards uh, going forward. Oh by the way I am trying to raise money for the charity Mind at the moment and I've got a raffle where you can win some Necron miniatures. There's three Necron Wraiths and a Triarch Stalker painted by the awesome Siege Studios and these are really well painted. It's five pound a ticket if you're interested, there's a link in the description below. And if you can't support it by buying a ticket, then maybe you could just share the raffle for me. Let's try and raise as much money as we can. Okay, so let's start off with the stratagems. Now, bear in mind that this is my initial thoughts. So things might change. And of course, playtesting is definitely needed. But this is how I sort of ranked them when I initially looked at them. So first of all, we've got the Eternal Guardian Stratagem, and this one allows you to basically bring back a character. Now, the character can only be brought back once, but I'm thinking with characters being quite a prominent thing, especially in this dynasty, giving us that plus one to hit, this is pretty good. And unlike our previous stratagem uh, that did this in the old rules, you don't have to roll to see if they come back. That was on a four plus. This one, they just come back. Not only that, they come back automatically with half of their wounds rather than just rolling a dice to see how many wounds they come back with. I thought this was a really good stratagem and I gave it three stars. The next stratagem, which I also gave three stars to, was Vengeful Stars. So if you get shot at and a model gets destroyed, you can then shoot as if it was your movement phase. And if you have a leader attached to the unit, then you get Ignore's cover as well. Now, I thought this was pretty powerful, actually, because this could scare your opponents. They know whatever unit uh, that they shoot at, if one model gets destroyed, that unit could potentially be shooting back at them. So I thought that was really good. Now, there's one strategy in which I gave one star to, not because it was like, bad, but because I thought it was quite situational and that was a sudden storm which allows you basically to what does it allow you to do ranged weapons equipped by models in this unit have the assault ability in addition uh, a character leading the unit allows you to re-roll advanced rolls made for your unit 
And of course, we know that we can advance and we don't get no penalty for shooting an assault weapon after we advance, unlike obviously in 9th edition. So it could be pretty good, but like I said, I think it's a bit more situational. I don't think it's a bad one, but I don't think it's quite as good as the others. Now, the other three stratagems I gave two star two. Uh, potentially, they could be three star, but it depends maybe on your list and your build, etc. So we had the Hungry Void, helping you with strength and AP uh, in close combat. We had the Conquering Tyrant, uh, helping you re-roll wound rolls, especially at half strength, if you have a, a half range. If you have a character, you can do it at full range. And then the last one was Undying Legions, which turns your RP from D3 wounds to D3 plus one. So under sort of critical circumstances, just trying to get maybe above 50%, that could be quite useful. So that's how I rated the stratagems. Right, let's talk about enhancements next. Now I didn't actually do a star rating with these, I just did a yes or no. Um, and my initial reaction for the first one, that of darkness, was a no because I was a bit disappointed with it, to be totally honest with you. Uh, the Veil of Darkness, now um, you have to declare it at the, at the end of your opponent's turn and then you come in to the, your next turn. Uh, I had a bit of a knee-jerk reaction when I first read this rules and I thought, ah, oh, that's rubbish, no. But uh, having read the other enhancements and seen now that it's only 20 points, I actually gave it a tick, so a yes. The uh, Hyper Material Ablator, 25 points. That gives you the stealth ability and also if your opponent is over uh, 12 inches away from you then you get the benefits of cover. I thought that was pretty decent, so obviously a bit more expensive but definitely uh, playable. And then we had the Sovereign Coronal. Coronal? Coronal. Coronal. And then we have the Sovereign which is 30 points and I actually gave this a tick when I first read it um, but after seeing the points I've changed it to an X but to be honest with you I think it needs some play testing. I think it could be actually pretty decent depending on your list. So effectively you could have a unit uh, be as if it was leading a character to give you that plus one to hit without actually having a character with it as long as it's within six inches of another character. Uh, 30 points. I mean, when we come to list building, like I said, we're probably going to list build and have points at the end, and then we're going to start dishing out these enhancements. Of course, you can only have three enhancements uh, in a list. The last one for 10 points, uh, the Sempiternal Weave, the Weave. Uh, 10 points, that's all. And then um, the Necron models only, the bearer has the feel no pain 4 plus um, ability. And of course, we're not limited uh, to units that we can take these apart from. You can't give them uh, to uh, epic heroes, but we can give them to anything else that we like. Pretty decent. Overall, I'm happy with these. Right, now I'm going to have a look at the index cards themselves. I'm not going to delve too deep here. I'm going to give you my initial thoughts and then my thoughts after getting the points. Uh, and we're going to go from there, basically. Uh, so first up is Imitech the Stormlord, uh, which, when I first saw this, was a bit of a disappointment. However, now that I've seen that he is the only way that we can actually get extra CP within the army, I actually think um, that's really good, uh, especially having seen some of the stratagems and things. I think CP is going to be very important to this game, and that has made uh, Imitech uh, better for me than my initial thoughts were, even though when I first saw it, it was a, a bit of a disappointment. Uh, however, I am going to give him three stars. Uh, I gave him three stars before I saw the points, and I maintained that when I saw the points, 105 points, not too bad uh, if you consider uh, that he can give us a CP each turn. And of course he does have other abilities as well. Doing the lightning storm within 12 inches, whilst that is very different to how we've played it before, I think we can get Imatech into a good position with the survivability that the army has. And uh, popping that off could be pretty good. That's a reasonable amount of mortal wounds that he can do, even though it's only once per game. 
So Imhotep the Stormlord, three stars, I like him. Next up is Orican, who at one point used to be able to transform into almost like a mini Catan. He can still do that, but um, I won't be exchanging his model for a Catan model anymore. Uh, he does have the ability to basically triple uh, his attacks and strength uh, characteristics. Um, and also the Staff of Tomorrow, every successful wound roll made for this model attack scores a critical wound. Not only that, Master a Chronomancer, any units that he joins, they get a 4 plus invulnerable save. That is like really cool. Uh, so I actually gave him uh, 3 stars, I actually gave him, I went out of my sort of uh, format and I gave him a 3 stars plus because I thought he was really good. That was before I saw the points. When I saw the points, 80 points. He maintains that three star plus. I really like Orican. Now just backtracking slightly to Imitech the Stormlord, he can lead uh, Necron Warriors, Immortals and Lich Guard and actually most of the characters, uh, that's all they can lead apart from maybe the specialized ones like the Scorpec uh, Lord. So yeah, just those three units. I was a bit surprised by this, uh, however I think it potentially uh, highlights the fact that maybe even though Praetorians seem to have got a bit of a boost, I think maybe Lich Guard possibly are the unit of choice uh, with this sort of character leading ability. However, yeah, Orican, I really liked him and uh, gave him three star. Next up is Anra Kerr, which when I first read the rules I gave uh, three stars to. He has the ability uh, to lead a unit and then each time a model in that unit makes an attack add one to the wound roll, which I thought was pretty decent. I felt his mind of the machine was situational, uh, so I actually gave that a one star. So we had like a three star ability, a one star ability, which changed it maybe into a two star, especially when I saw the points, 95 points, not like overly expensive. Uh, but I just felt overall he was probably just a, a two-star unit, a playable unit, but certainly not an auto-take. Now, when you look at the back of Anraka's card, uh, which I'm not quite sure why they put the rules on the front and the back of the card, I think just all on one side would have been better, but that's just my preference. Uh, he can only lead Immortals, so I think that reaffirms is definitely not a, a three-star unit. Uh, because if you don't play Immortals, you can't even use him. Or at least, he can't lead a unit, but I don't think you'll play him without leading a unit. So, yeah, two stars for Anrika. Next up we have Vargard, which I thought had a really good ability. I gave it three stars straight away. Uh, whilst he's uh, leading a unit with a Nemesaur in it, uh, then the unit has the four plus fill no pain ability, which that sounds really good, doesn't it? Uh, when the points came in, 85 points, he maintained his uh, three-star ability, but of course it would depend on Nemesaur. So let's skip to Nemesaur, because he's not next for some reason. Uh, but Nemesaur, uh, of course, has the ability to augment uh, the units that he's with. Uh, sustained hits, lethal hits, devastating wounds, all pretty decent. He is only 85 points. Uh, so yeah, I think those two as a combination, definitely a three star. I think they could be pretty good. And what's really nice is to have some of these fluffy characters be good now and actually very playable. So I was really happy with that. Okay, so next up is Illuminor Xerus, which I have to be honest, um, my opinion may be slightly different from what I've seen elsewhere, other people talking about him. Uh, when I first saw him, I gave him two star. I thought he was definitely playable, uh, but I didn't think he was standout. He has the ability to uh, help units that are within range of him with their AP, and also reducing AP to uh, gunshots which come into them. So I definitely can see he's very usable. Um, but when I saw the points, 220 points, I thought this guy is pretty expensive. Uh, so, I mean, I didn't drop his star rating, I kept him at two star, I think he's definitely very playable, but I don't think he's necessarily the standout unit. He could be useful under the right circumstances. Um, I think maybe just some playtesting would be needed for this guy, because 
There's quite a lot of points and potentially you could get quite a number of other characters uh, in the list um, other than taking Illuminor. So I'm sort of going to buck the trend. I don't think it's a standout go-to HQ, but I think it's definitely very playable. Um, yeah, for sure. Okay, so next it's Trazin, who when I first saw his rules, I gave two star two. I thought he was okay. His uh, surrogate host ability allowing you to destroy a character and then replacing them with him um, is potentially fairly situational. You're gonna have to have a character just on one wounds left uh, with no intention to try and use the stratagem to, to bring him back. And to be honest with you, it's never sat well for me to kill a character and then replace them with someone else. It's, it's a bit weird, it might be quite fluffy, um, but I've never really been wanting to play that rule. I think it's playable, but maybe just not for me. And then when I saw the points, 75 points, not expensive necessarily. Uh, so I maintained the three, two star on this guy. Uh, definitely not a three star character for me. Um, but if you like him, you're probably going to play him. Okay, so next it's the Royal Warden, which when I first saw him, I gave him two star. Uh, he has a couple of, of abilities, allowing the unit to um, count as having heavy or assault weapons, uh, which could be quite useful. Uh, and then we've got the igna ig engrammatic logic, uh, where basically only once per game, but you can um, make a fouled battle shock test pass. Um, if you're within 12 inches of that unit. So I thought it was pretty decent, but I wanted to see the points. And I've seen the points, and it's 40 points, and my rating's gone up to a three star, because for 40 points, that's a pretty nice character. And of course, don't forget, especially in this dynasty, if a character is leading a unit, then you get plus one to hit. So for 40 points, plus one to hit, plus the other abilities, pretty good. So next up, it's the Scorpec Lord, who of course can lead a different unit to Immortals, Warriors and Lich Guard. He can lead uh, Scorpec Destroyers. And I gave him three star when I first saw him. He changes the hits of Scorpec Destroyers into lethal hits, which is pretty decent. He does also do mortal wounds as well uh, when he makes a charge. Uh, so each time this model ends a charge move, Select one enemy unit with engagement range of this mod and roll a d6. On a 2 or 5, it's d3 mortal wounds, and on a 6, it's d3 plus 3 mortal wounds. Uh, pretty nice. And he has, of course, a 4 plus invulnerable save. And when I saw the points, 115 points, I thought that was pretty decent. If you are playing as Scorpec Destroyers, then definitely he might be a consideration for you. And I've kept him at 3 star. Okay, so more characters, we've got so many. Uh, next up is the Locust Lord, which again I gave three star when I first saw him. If you're taking uh, Locust Destroyers or Locust Heavy Destroyers, he could be pretty good. He has the Destroyer Cult ability and un, uh, a successful uh, unmodified hit roll of a five uh, becomes a critical hit, which is pretty nice. He has the Feel No Pain ability uh, he has the Resurrection Orb, and this is where uh, the points have started to be notably different because we no longer have to pay for the war gear. So now the points, and this guy comes in at 85 points, it includes war gear. Now, in this case, you can only have one of the following, so you can only have either the Ply Plysectory, whatever it's called, uh, or Resurrection Orb, you can't have both. So this guy is 85 points with a Resurrection Orb, um, and actually this ability with the war gear in the points has changed uh, some of these units' um, point of view quite a bit, but more on that later. Uh, but yeah, three star, got his points, definitely a three star unit if you're playing uh, Locust Destroyers and Heavy Destroyers, which of course are the only units uh, that he can lead. Now next up we've got the Lords, the traditional basic Lord, who I gave two star to when I first saw his rules. He's got a Resurrection Orb, and when I got his points, 65 points, 
And of course, including the resurrection orb, because of what I just said, then that makes this guy actually pretty good. Uh, if you want a cheap resurrection orb on the table, and the resurrection orb, of course, uh, which I haven't talked about yet, but this is really good because it allows you to do your uh, RP uh, rolls in your opponent's turn, as well as your turn. That's awesome. 65 points. He went up to three star. Okay, so next it's the Catacomb Commands Barge, which I played a lot in 9th edition. I gave two stars to when I first saw it. I just wasn't quite convinced. I think it was playable, but I didn't necessarily think he was a, a standout unit. He has advanced quantum shielding, which if your uh, enemy is shooting with double the strength, uh, then it's minus one to wound. Uh, he also has a four plus invulnerable, so quantum shielding basically isn't there, but a lot of the units which has it now has a four plus invulnerable save, which I'll take, you know, four plus invulnerable save is, is very nice. Now his points came in at 150 points. Uh, the ability to take the resurrection orb within that points cost um, is pretty decent. And if you want a mobile uh, character, then this guy could be pretty good. His uh, resurrection orb also works on mounted uh, units as well. Obviously he can't lead a unit because he's in his command barge. I kept him at two star. Um, I'm going to play test him and see if it changes after play testing. Now next we have the Overlord, uh, which I started off with two star. Um, his My Will Be Done ability, which allows you to do a stratagem for zero CP, even if you've done a stratagem on that unit already. And then he's got uh, resilience each time a unit is allocated to this model, subtract one from the uh, damage characteristic. He has his resurrection orb. And when you factor in how many points he is, 85 points. And the fact that we don't pay for that orb uh, separately or in an addition, uh, then he jumps up to three star. Because obviously when I rated him at two star, I didn't know about how the point system was going to work. So yeah, the Overlord, three star, Okay, so next up, it's the Cryptex. First of all, the Technomancer. I gave him three star when I first saw his rules. He gives his units the five plus uh, feel no pain ability. He has the ability to bring back uh, D3 lost wounds on a unit within three inches. It's quite short, but it's, it's good. He comes in at 60 points, which I thought was really good. He kept his uh, three star rating, and not only that, but he can uh, lead a unit which is also being led by a royal warden or a noble unit. Uh, so pretty good. Again, of course, only warriors, lich guard and uh, immortals. The Psychomancer I gave two star to when I saw his rules. Uh, that shot up to three star when I saw his points. So 50 points for the Psychomancer. He can do battle shock tests or make your opponents do battle shock tests. Uh, and if you want cheap HQs, you know, it's not bad for 50 points. We, I, I do think that we have to be a bit careful uh, taking too many HQs. All the HQs are pretty decent uh, and pretty well costed in terms of points, which, let's face it, we've been crying out for cheap HQs for ages. Our HQs always seem to be over-costed. Uh, and now they're not over-costed, so, I would advise don't fall into the too many HQ trap. Uh, just be a bit careful on that. Uh, Chronomancer, I gave three star two. Actually, I gave three star plus two. I thought the Chronomancer was really good. Uh, he has the ability to uh, subtract one from the hit roll for a unit which is leading. That's really useful. And then in your shooting phase, after this model unit has shot, if it is not within engagement range of an enemy unit, uh, that unit can make a normal move up to five inches. So you can shoot and move after this unit has shot. So you could lead a unit which doesn't have guns, like Lich Guard, because you can go with Lich Guard, Immortals and Necron Warriors. Um, you could lead units of Lich Guard that don't have guns. Shoot his gun, then the unit has shot, and then you can move for free. I'm really liking that and that's why I gave it a three star plus. Uh, and then he got 50 points um, as his points cost, which 
just kept that three star plus. So yeah, I think the Quality Mance are really good for the points. Coming over to the Plasmancer, I gave three star two when I first saw him. Definitely very playable. He gives a five plus critical hit ability to the units that he's leading. Now, I've talked about Tesla Immortals being quite good in the past and uh, this guy's going to make them even better because of course critical hit gives us the sustains hit ability and it does say a successful unmodified hit roll of a five so it's going to be like the old days um, really good yeah two extra hits on a five plus uh, very nice he's also got the living lightning in your shooting phase select one enemy unit within 18 inches and visible to this model a roll 1d6 for each model in that enemy unit for each six it suffers one mortal wounds i like the way that we've got a bit more mortal wound uh, power in our army of course the plasmancer historically was able to do mortal wounds anyway but it's just nice to see he came in at 55 points which meant he kept his three star status and all of a sudden we're starting to see that even though we've only looked at characters so far things are looking pretty good Okay, so let's talk about some other units apart from characters. We're now onto Necron Warriors, which when we first saw them was slightly disappointing. Uh, of course, their ballistic skill changed, but we've got good leaders now, cheap leaders, which when leading this unit is going to make them obviously a plus one to hit. So that may not be the case when we get other dynasties. So maybe this dynasty is about the warrior unit, although obviously immortals are still... No, pretty decent, so we'll come to them in a second. So I gave these two star uh, when I first saw their data sheets, but uh, when I looked at some of the characters and I saw how many points the characters were going to be, uh, I changed that to, to three star because I think, you know, warriors are going to be very good, uh, especially with things like resurrection orbs and potentially reanimators and ghost arcs around them. They're going to be hard to shift. Now, I haven't rated the guns yet, the two different guns, because I think we're going to play test them. Let's play test them, rate them afterwards. Uh, but as a battle line unit, warriors are going to be pretty decent. Uh, they came in at, well, 12 points each, but it doesn't work like that now. So uh, 10, 120, and of course 20 is 240 points. That's it. There's no other choices. Uh, but I did break down the, the points just to give me an idea from previous editions. So yeah, it's basically 12 points a miniature. So coming over, we've got, of course, Immortals, uh, which I gave three star to straight away, uh, just because of that extra uh, ballistic skill, a character with them, they're gonna be hitting on twos. Uh, they have the Implacable Eradicator ability, which allows you to re-roll the wound rolls of a one. However, if your opponent is near an objective, you can re-roll all of the wound rolls, uh, which I thought was pretty good. Again, whilst I said I think Tesla Immortals are really good, uh, there's nothing against the Gauss Blasters who do lethal hits. Uh, so yeah, pretty decent. They came in at 14 points, so 70 points for 5, 140 points for 10, and uh, I gave them 3 star. Right, it's the Reanimator next, who I gave 3 star to when I saw its rules. Um, a 4 plus feel no pain, really nice. He has, of course, the Aura ability, whilst friendly Necron units are within 12 inches of this model. No line of sight needed, just have to be within 12 inches. Each time that unit activates its resurrection protocols, you get an additional D3 back. Now, bearing in mind, if you have a unit with a resurrection orb, you're going to be doing that in your opponent's turn as well as yours. And if you have a reanimator nearby, that's pretty powerful. You're going to be getting a lot of miniatures back. Of course, the only exception to that is if your opponent can wipe out a unit. Um, but they may struggle with that. He came in at 95 points, which although a bit more expensive, he's so much more playable now, and he's definitely a three star. This guy, uh, really, really liking that reanimator now. Next up is another unit that I really liked when I saw the rules, the Hexmark Destroyer. I actually gave a three star two when I first saw it. He has the ability, of course, to uh, do really good Overwatch. Uh, so first of all, he can overwatch on a 2+, plus, 
and then he can once per turn uh, one unit from your army with this ability can be targeted uh, with the uh, fire overwatch stratagem for zero cp that's once per turn so basically every turn you get assaulted you could do a free overwatch um, on a unit uh, pretty decent um, one unit it's once per turn, one unit from your army. I was just checking to see if he had to be in range of a unit, and he doesn't. So basically, you can do Overwatch twice. You only pay for the CP uh, for once, uh, and he does his Overwatch on a 2+. plus. He does also have the multi-threat ability. Each time an enemy unit targets a friendly Necrons unit uh, within 3 inches of this model with a ranged attack after the enemy is shot this model can shoot as if it were your shooting phase and he's got some really good interaction and he also has of course deep strike he's a lone operative um, and coming in at 70 points i actually took him up to a three star plus uh, because i thought he was really good uh, now we're going to talk more about death marks later but potentially this guy with death marks on the table uh, sniping characters could be pretty nice. Okay, so next up it's the Lich Guard, who I gave three star to when I first saw their ability. It's minus one to wound roll uh, for the unit if they're being led by a noble. They have all their usual sort of weapon options uh, available to them. Uh, now they come in at 19 points, which is not exactly cheap, but it's not exactly expensive. You know, a half decent unit of 10 models, you'd probably expect to pay around 200 points for. So these are 190 points for a unit of 10, uh, which is, you know, acceptable. However, as the unit, which uh, is basically, apart from the Immortals and Warriors, is the only main unit that can be led by a lot of these characters that we have, I think this unit is going to be pivotal in our armies. So I've actually increased uh, them to a, a three star plus. Um, yeah, so much for my three star system. So that is the Lich Guard. Yeah, really liking them. I think you'll see them a lot on the table. Now, next it's Death Marks. Now when I first saw Death Marks, I actually gave them one star. I wasn't that impressed. I was a bit disappointed to be honest with you. Uh, when I saw their points, uh, 13 points, so 130 for 10. I didn't think that was that bad, so I increased them to a two star. Definitely playable, potentially in combination with things like the Hexmark Destroyer. And if other armies are relying on characters for all of their buffs, like we are, then maybe Death Marks have a, a bigger place than I um, have given them. Playtesting is going to be needed. But I think as a, a two-star unit, you know, they're definitely playable, which is what we want. Right, Flayed Ones, one of my favourite units in the Codex, as I said earlier. They've been reduced to units of 10. Still gave them a two-star when I saw their stats. They have the ability, each time a model in this unit makes a melee attack, if the target of that attack is below half strength then successful hit rolls score critical hits. Pretty decent, four attacks, they've got sustained hits, which is nice, any sixes to hit, you get extra hits. And they come in at 14 points, so it's 140 points for 10, and not, of course, as cheap as they have been in ninth, but they're okay. Uh, so I gave them a two star. I mean, they're playable, I don't think they're a standout unit, but they're definitely a playable unit. They do have the ability to infiltrate, uh, and they have stealth so you know you can infiltrate them and then they're minus one to hit once you've infiltrated them maybe their role has just been changed maybe now they are that little distraction unit a little bit maybe like orc commandos you just put them up front at the beginning of the game but of course i think uh, mission parameters is going to be a key thing as well once we see what all the missions are how they work might potentially dictate the flayed ones but definitely playable two star right next we have the crypt thralls and i gave them two star when i first saw their points uh, but the more i thought about it uh, the better they got and when they stuck at 40 points then they became three stars of course uh, they can join a unit with the crypt tech uh, you've got extra wounds there you can obviously reanimate them i think on the whole they're pretty good and 
whilst this unit is in the same unit as a cryptic model that cryptic model has the feel no pain ability which is nice because you know cryptics used to die really easily at least now we've got um, potentially the chance to keep them alive so i think the cryptothrolls really good i'm liking them a lot okay coming over to scorpec destroyers uh, so yeah they've changed their weapons now rather than two different weapon profiles we just have Scorpec hyperphase weapons. I like this idea. It matches the simplified uh, but not simple theme. Uh, so there's just one stats line. Uh, the stat line obviously is not quite as devastating as they have been, but they're pretty decent. Uh, strength seven, minus two, two damage. Um, and yeah, I gave them a three star when I first saw their ability. Um, being led by the Scorpec Lord, um, of course, it's going to improve what they can do. Um, but when I saw their points, 22 points a miniature, 220 points for a unit of six. Um, I actually, so I did downgrade them a little bit. I don't think they're quite as good as maybe I thought they were. Uh, I've given them two star, they're definitely playable. But I think maybe you might need a leader, uh, the Scorpet Lord, with this unit. So I don't think like three units of Scorpet Destroyers is going to be the thing, but I think maybe a unit of Scorpet Destroyers with a Scorpet Lord could be pretty, pretty good. Uh, as I said, playable, not amazing, but definitely, definitely playable. Okay, next it's the Triarch Stalker. When I first saw the Triarch Stalker, I have to be honest, um, I gave it one star. I gave it one star, needs playtesting. Uh, because, yeah, I wasn't that impressed. And to be honest with you, I was a bit disappointed. I was expecting the Triarch Stalker to go up in the ratings uh, to what it was, but not really. Um, the target relay is no longer reroll ones. It's uh, the target that you've shot at doesn't get a cover save, which could be quite good because cover save is going to be everywhere in 10th. Uh, however, I'm not sure how powerful that would be. Um, definitely need playtesting. I was a bit disappointed with the twin heavy gauss cannon, which whilst I didn't really use it in ninth, I always used it in previous editions because I liked to have my Triarch Stalker sitting back and shooting long distance guns. Uh, yeah, this is only 24 inches uh, on that gun. Uh, strength eight, minus two, two damage. So, you know, it's not that great of a gun. Uh, so yeah, I think the Triarch Stalker, my most disappointing unit, I did rate it two to one to two star with playtesting needed uh yeah it's probably a one star but i'll be interested to know what you think let me know in the comments box below okay so now we're coming to the Catan. so i'm not going to go into too too much detail here and what i can tell you is all the Catans i thought were pretty decent obviously we no longer have the powers of the Catan, which i think is good it, it simplifies things uh, and you know these rules are definitely simplified I think it's generally going to be easier to play the game once you get used to your abilities and the data cards but having these cards in front of you on the table I think it's going to be really useful uh, you know no more flicking so I think well done Games Workshop I'm actually really liking the format and how you've done it I think it's really good so we got the uh, Deceiver I gave him uh, two star, but to be honest with you, I think these Catans, I think it depends on your play style. I think they could all be three star, they could all be two star. Uh, this is just my personal rating. So I gave the Catan of the Deceiver two star, 265 points. I gave the Nightbringer two star, 255 points. I gave the Void Dragon three star mainly because he's obviously more of a vehicle killer and I think vehicles will be quite heavy in 10th, especially at the beginning. That might change over time. Uh, but I gave him three star for 270 points. And then we move on to the Transcendent Katam, who I also gave three star to. Saw his rules, thought they were really good. He comes in the most expensive Katam, um, 280 points, uh, which you know, confirms really, I think, my my thoughts on his rule. So I really liked those. Now, the good thing is, of course, Catans aren't limited. Obviously, epic heroes are. So it's one Deceiver, one Void Dragon, 
one um, Nightbringer. Uh, however, the Transcendent Catan is limited to three. So we've got six Catans on the table. You could potentially take the Tesseract Vault as well. The Catan list, which I used to play back in, I can't remember the edition, sixth or seventh, uh, is back, baby. So I'm going to be looking forward to, to trying out the Catan list, just for fun, of course. So that is our Catans. As I said, I'm going to dive much deeper into these rules in the future. The Canoptic Spider, I gave two points to. He's, he's okay. Uh, he can uh, obviously um, generate scarabs if you've got scarab units. He's got the Fabricator Claw for the vehicles. He's got the Gloom Prism. Uh, the unit size reduced to two, so it's either one or two. Comes in at 75 points of miniature, 150 points for two. Um, I think at those points, even though you do get the sort of war gear options for free, effectively, I think he's still two star. Don't think he's necessarily, he's definitely not an auto include, but he's pretty decent. He's definitely playable. And to be fair, that's what we want. Like I said, I'd rather have the whole codex two star than lots of one stars and lots of three stars. If everything's two star, then probably Games Workshop have done it about right. But in an ideal world, obviously, a few three stars is going to be really good because obviously that pushes us, us forward and maybe makes us more future proof, um, helping us compete with other armies um, as obviously, you know, the codex creeps happens. And of course, these are only index rules, so this could all change once we get our codex. We'll see what happens. Right, next it's the Ophidian Destroyers. I gave them two star. I uh, saw their points, 36.6 points each or 220 points for six. And they maintained their, their two star. Uh, you know, they're, they're okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the toughness went up to five, which was nice to see. And of course they can deep strike, etc. So they've got some cool abilities. Tomb Blades, um, my vision was that Tomb Blades were going to be really good in 10th. That's what I always thought and uh, looking at their rules, I stand by that as I gave them 3 star. They of course has the Scout ability, it's 9 inches, so 9 inch Scout. Uh, they have something called ev Evasion Engrams, each time an attack targets this unit, subtract 1 from the hit roll. Now why didn't they just give them Stealth? There must be a reason why not just have the universal special rule stealth. I'm not sure. There must be a reason. If you know the reason, let me know in the comments box below. Uh, I didn't really assess the gun options, but I am liking Tesla just to the fact that uh, it's an assault weapon. Uh, so you can, of course, uh, move, advance and not have any penalties for that. So they're going to be a very fast unit. Uh, they came in at 26.6 uh, points each, so 160 points for six. Their unit size, of course, reducing. Uh, so six is the maximum three or six. There's no nines. There's no twelves. I think at one point we could have twelve. Uh, but yeah, that's your Tomb Blades. Triarch Praetorians. When we saw the, the preview of Praetorians, we thought uh, these were going to be really good um, because they have the deep strike ability and uh, they have relentless uh, combatants. Uh, you can re-roll charge rolls made for this unit so they can come down, they can charge, and um, they can fall back and charge. So these guys, I know, when I first saw them, uh, I thought these could be really good. I gave them three stars. However, they can't be led by a character. Their points, 27 points. They are pretty expensive. 270 points for a unit of 10. I think they should have been more like 220 points and that, uh, for that reason, points wise, I've degraded them to a two star. They are playable. They are playable with a good distraction unit. They've got lots of good things about them, but they are quite costly. I think they've, they've priced themselves out of, out of the three star ranking. Right, next we have the Canoptic Wraiths and I saw these. One of my most favourite units that I've played over all of the editions, I pretty much play them in most lists, um, was a bit of a disappointment. Uh, I dropped them in at two star. I thought they were definitely playable. 
um, but I didn't think they were that great. Uh, they can no longer fall back and shoot. They do have their four plus and vulnerable save. Uh, they obviously have had a reduction in AP, but we knew that was going to happen. Uh, each time this unit ends a normal move, you can select one enemy unit if moved over during that move and roll a D6 on a four plus enemy unit suffers mortal wounds. Now I liked this, and this is why I kept them at two star rather than dropping them to three star, uh, dropping them to one star, because, you know, more mortal wounds on the table really nice you know really nice so they've got a different ability but i didn't think they were outstanding however when i saw how the points worked these guys coming in at 220 points which is i think pretty average for a close combat unit we now can take the guns on these guys for free effectively so every every model can have a gun and of course we've got the particle caster which you know we've used before and the particle caster has gone up in the world it's now uh, does devastating wounds and it's a pistol so we can still shoot it in close combat three attacks each and they hit on twos uh, strength five no ap one damage but that's okay we can do devastating wounds with these guys that's pretty good but not only that the trans-dimensional beamer is not a heavy weapon or anything so we can actually um, shoot this whilst moving. Uh, 12 inches, one shot. Ballistic skill four, so they hit in fours. Uh, strength four, minus two and three damage. So the damage side is better, uh, but I think overall the particle casters are the way to go. Chance of devastating wounds and hitting on twos. And it's within the points. I upped these to three star. And to be fair, I'm wondering if these might be one of the most underrated units uh, in the book. We'll see. Playtesting needed as always, of course. Right, let's move on. The Annihilation Barge. I thought this was going to be good in 10th edition and it's, it's half decent. It has the malevolent arcing ability, the stratagem given to this guy. I gave it two to three star, but needs play testing. And when I saw the points, 115 points, I didn't really change from that. Um, I think two or three star, play testing needed. It's playable, I just don't know how great it's going to be. I did like the fact that the Tesla gun had been increased to 36 inches, even though of course we get less attacks only six attacks this time this gun's gone up and down like a yo-yo in how many attacks you get but yeah it's currently six attacks we then have the doomsday arc i gave three star two when i first saw it we've seen the profiles of this um, unit it's, it's pretty decent and coming in at 185 points um, whilst on a top end i suppose you could argue um, it definitely maintains its it's three star profile. We then had the Locust Destroyers, which when I first saw them, I gave them one star. I'll be honest, I gave them one star. Um, I was a bit disappointed in them. However, when you factor in the Locust Lord with them, I think they're probably three star. Uh, the points have come out, they are uh, you can actually take these in smaller units, so it's one, two, three, or six. So no five or four. Uh, but six of these guys is 180 points, which is not bad. Um, so I've sort of, what I've done is I've gone in the middle for these. So um, I've gone for two star. I think these are pretty good. Um, with the Lord, probably three star. Um, playable, but, you know, I'm not 100% convinced they're an auto sort of include unit. Um, as always, playtesting needed. I mean, we're just looking at pieces of paper with rules written on, aren't we? So I will definitely be playtesting a lot of these units and I'll obviously be having battle reports on the channel as well. Next up is the Locust Heavy Destroyers. I gave these three stars straight off. Um, you know, really good, um, as they have been all through ninth, pretty much. They're um, Ignic... Enmitic exterminator gun 
Um, looks actually pretty decent this time. A heavy rapid fire, six sustained hits, 36 inches. The only issue is that we have quite a lot of anti-infantry type guns anyway. So I do think it's going to be the, the Gauss Destructor still on this unit. They come in at 45 points each, so it's the 135 points for three, which I thought was pretty decent. Definitely maintaining their uh, three-star status. Then we have the Canoptic Doomstalker. I gave him two-star at first. His weapon damage is now only three. It's a fixed three, which is fine. Um, but I thought it would depend on how many points this guy is. And this guy is 125 points, so he quickly went up to three star. He's definitely very playable. And um, I'm looking forward to playing him because, I mean, let's face it, one of the coolest models out of the new range that we had. Ghost arcs, of course, are transports. I wasn't surprised to see that they could only transport warriors. So 10 warriors and a character or a leader. Uh, it sort of makes, makes sense. I gave them three star to start with. They have the repair barge ability, which is awesome. It's once per phase. Uh, just after an enemy unit finishes making attacks, if one or more friendly Necron Warrior units within three inches of this model lost one or more wounds as a result of those attacks, this model can use this ability. If it does, select one of those Necron Warrior units. This unit's reanimation protocols activate. The same Necron Warrior unit cannot be selected more than once. Basically, it's going to really help getting our miniatures back. You're going to have to be quite close, three inches is quite close. Um, but yeah, coming in at 125 points, pretty cheap, three star status. I'm liking them. Next, it's the Doom Scythe. I rated this as two star when I first saw it. Came in at 225 points. I kept it at two star. It's playable. If you like the model, you're probably going to play it more. And it's okay. It's okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. Next up is the Night Scythe, which again, I maintained the two star status. Gave it two star, saw the points, 145 points. Kept it at two star. It's definitely very playable. Uh, obviously it can transport a Necron a unit which is nice and the stipulation is a Necron's infantry unit um, yeah I mean it's it is what it is it's not amazing um, but it's it's very useful talking of very useful we're going to now move to not very useful and that is the obelisk which when I first saw the rules I gave it a one star wasn't impressed with the rules then I saw the points 325 points, it maintains one star. And we haven't got many one star units, uh, but I think this is one of them. Uh, so, a bit disappointing, to say the least. The Tesseract Vault, uh, I came in with three star when I first saw it. I thought it was really good. It has great abilities to help us snipe out characters. And of course, it's a cool model as well. I uh, saw the points. 425 points, immediately drops that to two star. Um, it's quite a lot of points, isn't it? So I don't know if I'll be playing it that often. It will probably come out now and again. Um, it will probably make it into my Catan list. Uh, playable, but I don't think for the points it's quite three star. Next, it's the Monolith. Uh, which I gave three star to when I first saw the rules. Obviously, we already had the preview of the rules uh, on the Warhammer community website. Fairly decent rules. We were waiting for the points. 385 points. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. Um, I've left it at three star rating, but I want to play test this. I want to play test it. I've had feedback that the monolith has been taken out in one turn with the anti tank guns. Uh, in games that they've seen. So yeah, I want to play test it for myself, uh, but I have currently kept it at three star, but it could well be a two star unit. We are near the end. The big guy, the Silent King is next. I read his rules, gave him two star. I thought he was definitely downgraded. Um, he's, he's playable, he is playable. And then I got the points. 
470 points and I've downgraded him to one star. I have put a question mark by it though because I'm not 100% convinced by that but I think it's a bit of a disappointment. Uh, again, maybe playtesting needed but yeah, one star. And then we have the Convergence of the Dominion, which was three star when I first saw the rules. What awesome rules it has. However, it's come in at 255 points. Now I know you can't compare previous edition points, but it's gone from 80 points to 255 points. Whilst the rules are great, I do not think it's worth that amount of points. I think we've got so many other ways to help with RP that um, yeah I've rated it one star which is really disappointing because it's such a cool miniature uh, but yeah that will be a unit which I'm sure will will eventually get um, a points reduction over time. Overall I'm really really happy with the codex most of the units are two star we've got a lot of units which are three star and not many units which are one star so to reiterate, we've got the Obelisk, the Convergence of Dominion, and of course the Silent King at the bottom of the list. At the top of the list, I've put uh, Imatek, Orican, Vargard, and Nemesaur as a combo. Uh, the Overlord and the Lord, you know, Resurrection Orbs everywhere. Royal Warden, Technomancer, Chronomancer, and Plasmancer. I've got the Scorpec Lord and Locust Lords in there, but only when they're with their appropriate units. Uh, and then Warriors and Immortals. I've got the Reanimator, Hexmark Destroyer, Lich Guard, Crypto Thralls, Boy Dragon, Transcendent Catan, Tomb Blades, Wraiths, and Annihilation Barge, although that needs play testing. I've got the Doomsday Arc, the Locust Heavy Destroyers, when they're with their appropriate character, the Doomstalkers, and the Ghost Arcs all at uh, three star that's a lot of three star units and out of those three star units i'm going to pick my top three units and that is imitate the storm lord the hexmark destroyer and the lich guard and those are the units we're going to start with when we do our unit reviews so keep an eye out for those now don't forget to comment with your thoughts on what i've said if you've enjoyed the video, then please like the video. And if you want to see more videos, here is a video that YouTube thinks you would like to watch next. Uh -huh.